clouds of serenity. Where are we and what are we doing today? We are in beautiful Gippsland, Latrobe Valley, Victoria. And we are coming to meet Tony Wolf and Darren McCubbin. Uh -huh. These two blokes are amped about the jobs, economic and community benefits that offshore wind is going to bring to this region. Right. So this area has a very proud coal past and a really exciting renewables future. Should we go and meet them? Oh, look, I'm amped. Let's Boom. do it. Me, Jones, this season four, oh. episode two, Golden Beach, Gippsland, Latrobe Valley. All right. Uh, Lam, Yam, Boyang, Boyang, the sub saying. <laughs> okay, good. I got oh. it there. I got it now. <laughs> Isn't this a beautiful place? Tony, who are you? Where are we? And why are we interviewing you? My name's Tony Wolf. We are currently in Latrobe Valley in Victoria. I was actually born here, and it's a magnificent part of the world. I've worked in the coal industry for well over 40 years now and I think it's time that we moved forward to newer and cleaner technology. My name is Darren McCubbin. I'm the CEO of the Gippsland Climate Change Network. I love this area because it's so beautiful. It's got a great environment and the idea is that we can transition away from fossil fuels. We can create a, a cleaner planet, a better economy and jobs for our kids. So offshore wind? Good for local communities and their health, or bad? Absolutely fantastic. Transmission lines, above ground or below? Above. Transitioning our energy system to renewables, pronto or taking ages? As quick as we can. Nuclear or renewables? Renewables. Fossil fuel or renewables? Renewables. Clean renewable energy, healthy jobs, and a future for our kids in the region to all keep polluting with coal, oil, gas, then expensive nuclear and a buggered climate. Future renewables. Renewables over any of those others you mentioned. So why is offshore wind a no-brainer for Gippsland and Australia? It's a no-brainer for several reasons. We, we are transitioning away from fossil fuels and we need something to replace that with. Offshore wind in Australia, we've got huge resources and potential. We've got great wind speeds we've got capacity rivaled with the north sea wind up there people probably don't realize that 87 percent of the population of australia live within 50 kilometers of the coastline 50 kilometers so why wouldn't we embrace that technology that's close at hand and and reduce the travel distance for our electricity it's a great opportunity for australia huge potential here we've got overseas investors wanting to invest here particularly in gippsland where we've got very strong winds in off bass strait um, which which complement the onshore wind so when the onshore wind dies off the offshore wind picks up and and so it complements what we need in our energy grid you are here at the dawn of a new age because this is Gippsland's renewable energy zone and the site of an offshore wind development that will be about 25 gigawatts of energy. This will replace our fossil fuel industry and, and create jobs for our future and a fantastic environment. We need to get away from the old way of thinking into a new way of thinking. <laughs> wow, I'm excited. You should be excited. This is an exciting place. Well, we all want affordable, clean energy and a safe climate for our kids. So how is offshore wind the solution? Look, offshore wind creates from the natural environment. It creates from wind. It's always there. This is one of the windiest spots on the planet and in shallow water that the rest of the world is jealous of. In short, what do you think is going to happen when fossil fuels leave the Gippsland economy? So the fossil fuel industry is going to shut anyway whether we've got anything to transition to or not it's going to close it's closing for economic reasons not for environment reasons we'd love it to be closing for environmental reasons but it's closing because of economic reasons nobody will fund it um it, it's it's not a way of the future anymore if we have no renewable industry to go to here in gippsland people will move away Families will break down. The place is going to go into a, a, an economic downturn. It, it's going to be detrimental to the region. We're finding a lot of our kids going to Melbourne and a little bit, you know, worried about the future. Well, the renewable industry is creating us a positive future for them. 
So they'll be able to come here, get jobs, live in a beautiful environment and contribute to the health of the nation. Tell us about the renewable workforce that you've seen in Germany. Offshore wind needs a dedicated workforce, about 1,200 construction jobs and then ongoing about three to 400 for each zone. We'll probably have oh, two or 3,000 people working directly within the industry and then a whole lot of sustainable um, jobs coming from that. I read Ross Garno's book talking about an environmental superpower and Gippsland can become that first superpower, moving ourselves away from coal and moving into clean offshore wind that actually creates a manufacturing industry of green steel, green hydrogen and other green commodities which are going to replace some of the things that we do now. So our kids and our future is going to be tied to offshore wind creating green jobs. We've got the skills and the capacity here to embrace that uh, that new renewable technology, we're going to need to train so many more people. So we have to train uh, existing workers, but we're also going to need so many more to service this new industry, which is great for the region. We've got oil and gas platforms that are shutting down off Gippsland as well, and, and the workforce there can transfer on into probably more readily into offshore wind than, than the coal workforce. The base skills need a little bit of finessing and they're fully transferable into this new industry. And it's exciting for the workforce and for the community to have something to look forward to. And we've got the opportunity and the resources here in Gippsland and the communities behind it that they can see jobs, they can see skills enhancement, they can see the fact that kids get to stay here in this region without moving away. As we transition away from fossil fuels and start to rely more on renewable energies, what happens if the infrastructure isn't up and running yet? If the infrastructure is not up and running, we have to find another way to produce that energy because we're increasing our electricity demand every day. There's been a lot of talk about we'll use gas to do that. If we use gas, that's going to push the price of electricity consumption for householders, for everybody, um, it's going to push it up. The price of gas is one of the most expensive ways to produce electricity. So we need the renewables. The quicker we get them, the cheaper our price is going to be for electricity. Also, it means a continuation of the use of fossil fuels, which we know we need to stop using as soon as possible. And gas is a fossil fuel that's just as dirty as coal or, or nearly as dirty as coal. What about nuclear? We would not have the ability to create nuclear within a time frame that we need for the planet's survival. It's crazy to go down that direction when we've got so much available renewable resource here on our doorstep. Nuclear is a very expensive option. If you look at the offshore wind zone, there were 37 proponents that all put money in to be able to get a crack at that. There are no investors coming forward to do anything to do with the nuclear industry. It would be funded by the taxpayers. And frankly, that means you and me. There are always objections to new infrastructure. Is, the, is it the same here? Look, I get people's concerns about, um, you know, transmission lines in particular, uh, you know, affecting their visual amenity. I get that. As I get when I look at the huge pit that happens in the Latrobe Valley, as I get when I look at the power stations pouring out CO2 into the atmosphere, I, look, I get that. But we need this. I looked at the visualisations uh, and they're so far offshore. Am I, am I going to need binoculars to see these things or what? The offshore wind zone starts about 10 kilometres offshore. And right now you'll see some oil and gas rigs there. And yeah, you will see them into the future. But I bet you saw the roads on the way in and the houses and the townships and everything which dotters the coast. And that's part of how we live. And the way we live should be cleaner and should protect our environment. So critical infrastructure always impacts the local environment, doesn't it? So is it an unavoidable trade-off? Offshore wind, for example... The pylons in the ocean act as artificial reefs and it's been proven overseas that they attract more sea life around there, which it's been proven that, that it actually increases fish numbers in those regions. We've got plenty of evidence behind the fact that new projects have the opportunity to be nature positive if they wish. This region is mostly supportive of the change. We've been part of the energy generation for a century. And the idea is that we're gonna change now to cleaner renewables. We need something to replace what we've done for the last 100 years with coal. We need 
We still need to produce electricity, it's just the fuel source that needs to change. So as the sun sets on the coal industry here in Gippsland, we've got a bright new renewable future to look forward to.